Hey there, and welcome to the behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast. I'm Lydia Walker from rusticsongbird.com, and I'm taking you behind the scenes of an interview on the podcast. I hope you enjoy this video, but before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoy topics like this, we have new podcast episodes coming out every single week, and the behind the scenes will be here on this YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoy this show, consider becoming a patron and supporting Rustic Songbird on Patreon. You can check out all the details at patreon.com slash rustic songbird. All right, let's get into today's show. My guest on the show today is Roz Welch. She is a singer, songwriter, recording artist. She has written songs she's performed songs she's been in the music industry and in the world of music for a long time and i asked her to come onto the show today to talk about writing songs from the heart and being authentic and sharing your message through your songs so roz welcome to the show and thank you so much for being here and for being willing to share your story with us today hey thank you so much for having me lydia i'm excited to be here and I'm just excited to hang out with you. Yes, I've been looking forward to this for so long, and uh, I've been really excited to have you on the show and share about your music. I enjoy listening to your music, and you're just <laughs> such a light as a person. Like anytime I have seen you in person, and we've um, like met in different groups of friends and networks. I've just seen you glow like you have this Holy <laughs> Spirit glow on you and also just the biggest smile that just lights up a room and you can tell that the Holy Spirit is just oozing out of you in the <laughs> best way um, and I really enjoy the energy and like the stylistic things that you put in your songs and I think uh, this is a great topic to cover because uh, so many people have trouble with the confidence of putting themselves out there and especially when they're writing songs to make it true to themselves and not copy other people. And so that's what I want to talk about today and just share your expect, uh, your experience and any stories that you want to, any advice and encouragement uh, would be awesome. And first I just oh, want well. to give you a chance to talk about your story of getting started writing songs and what that songwriting journey has been for you. Absolutely. Man, first of all, thank you so much. I feel so encouraged already. You know, you're like, this Holy Spirit oozing thing you're talking about. And I'm just like, is he oozing? Is he oozing? I can tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. He's in you, girl. That's amazing. And I, first of all, you got to shout out to God because literally he gave me the gift of his presence, you know, and right. I'm so thankful for that. And I think for the most part, like that's my primary inspiration, you know, because I know for me in life, emotionally it could be one day i'm in the, i'm literally in the clouds you know and then <laughs> sometimes it's the next minute i'm in the dirt you know um but i really thank god for his presence because in his scriptures he promises that his presence will go with us wherever we go you know so whether it's an emotional high or it's emotional low his he promises to go with us you know so that's one thing I'm thankful for. And just to answer your question about how I got started with songwriting, funny story, freshman year of college, actually, um, I wanted to try out for the choir and I was like, great, smart idea. I'm gonna write an original, it's gonna be a hit. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to use that song to sing to try out. It's going to make me stand out and I'm definitely going to make choir. So I don't know why I had that bright idea to write a song. I, I never had written a song prior to that. You know, I grew up writing poetry and writing in my diary, dear diary, you know. <laughs> um, but I had never written a song before then. Um, and I ended up writing that song for um, Quiet Tryouts. And to this day, I have a friend from college who will not let, let me live that down. Like, he still laughs at me about that. Um, but that's where I started. I literally, like, wrote this song. And I did make choir, for those of you who are wondering. <laughs> that's awesome. I don't think it was a song, though. <laughs> Oh man! But it yeah, was the voice, probably the personality, the confidence, <laughs> uh, the confidence to show up and write an original song for an audition. That's a lot of pressure, actually. 
listen, and you mentioned something about confidence earlier. And I think literally like I may have way too much because like <laughs> I didn't even think about maybe I should just sing somebody else's original, do it real good, you know, and focus yeah. on that. I was just like trying to stand out and make sure I made quiet. <laughs> <laughs> which but you did which is impressive. I did I did make choir <laughs> <laughs> so oh, writing man. your first song came from being a writer of poetry and liking writing as an expression and I think it's interesting because that came so natural to you that you just thought oh yeah I'll write a song I haven't written a song before but I can write you know and uh and it just gets better with practice and so just being willing to start is a huge thing it's a huge thing and you know honestly after that, I, I hadn't written a song for years after that. Cause like I went to choir, did choir for freshman year, didn't even sing in the choir beyond that, you know? Um, but what I did do is, uh, in, in college, we had to have, um, this thing called, um, Christian service, right? I went to a Christian liberal arts school and we had to have a Christian service, which is basically volunteer hours. You, um, find a, a place or, um, some place in the community to, be a part of and volunteer. And for me, it was the radio, the radio station. And I volunteered at a radio station for all of my uh, college years. Um, so I didn't have to change up where I would do my Christian service. Um, but hosting that radio show opened my creative capacity because I was playing um, songs of my favorite artists, people that I really liked. Um, and this was, we hosted a Christian hip hop show. Um, and so I would play these artists and I didn't realize this, but I was totally into how they wrote the songs, how they delivered the bars, what instrument was coming in and when the music would transition. I didn't realize I was taking it in that deeply, but I really was, I enjoyed everything about the production aspect of it. Um, and just listening to lyrical delivery. So yeah. Imagine my surprise when years later, um, I graduated from college and I moved to Memphis, Tennessee into this community with a bunch of hip hop artists. And suddenly uh, one of them is like, hey, I need some vocals on a track. Can you come to the studio? And I was like, sure, I could sing. <laughs> You know, so I've that, been in choir. That, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> I could also write. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh so man. Cool. And, but that's that's how that journey progressed, you know. And I'm in the studio, and I I featured vocally on um, with another artist. Um, but I again, I still wasn't thinking then about writing music. But then I, I said to him, I was like, man, I want to write. I mean, I want to sing some more. And then he's like, well, you're going to have to write it. <laughs> and I was like, give me a pen. Yeah, so, I can write. Yeah. yeah. And so, that's so you were one in the studio writing the lyrics for the song you were about to sing. Well, that's well. actually I, I sang. I had already sang the song that I was going to sing that I, okay. I was invited to the studio to sing. But. I think the the creative bug bit me and I was like yes. more 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 there's more <laughs> yeah and so as I was I was demanding almost like demanding to sing on more songs and uh he's like if you want to sing more songs you should write them <laughs> and I was just like give me a pen <laughs> so that's literally how that progressed and from there um I began to um I began to kind of reach backwards, you know, into like my poetry hat, into those moments in the radio station when I would hear all the different deliveries. And, and so I began to write my own songs. Um, yeah, and that's, that's how that progressed. That's so interesting to me because I think about those opportunities and those situations that happen that we could have easily have turned down or you know written off and just say like hey I'll wait till later like I don't have enough experience well that's how we get experience but uh, you know we could have had excuses 
at those opportunities, but it's when we move forward with those that it leads to something else and something else like you could be invited to sing on one song and then you meet somebody in the studio and then mm -hmm. they hear you sing and invite you to do something else or you meet a co-writer and that's just how it progresses from that yeah. one opportunity or that one thing that you say yes to. And yes. Say, and yes, I'll go for it. I'll try it. I'll do my best. Yeah, you know, um, you're absolutely right about that. And that's actually even when I think back about it, that's what makes me excited because I see, for me, I see like it had to be the Lord's hand divinely being like, let me help nudge her along this way, you know? Um, because ironically, my journey started probably when I was a kid writing poetry. Um, but in terms of being ignited and really seeing like, I have a gift for it. It started in that studio when I was like, I want to sing more songs, you know, and I was encouraged to write. And so ironically, a few years later, I actually received my first award uh, for Writer Artist of the Year at GMA Immerse. And I'm just That's like, amazing. wait, what? Like from starting in a studio to now receiving this award and that same artist, um, his name's Derek Minor. I ha had the opportunity now to um, feature on songs with him vocally, but the difference in featuring with him vocally on these songs is now that I helped to co-write these songs, you know? So it's just awesome. like, wow, like exactly what you're saying. Sometimes it just takes saying yes to one opportunity to moving forward into future opportunities. Yeah, I heard something the other day that I thought was spot on about finding those things that are unique about ourselves and even thinking back to our childhood and like what we were uh, made fun of for what people picked on us for the things we wanted to change about ourselves like because it was different from other people like if you're insecure you want to blend in right but it's those things about us that make us unique that are actually what we can showcase to be authentic to ourselves, yeah. to our own style, like those little quirks are actually what make <laughs> us different and unique. So what was that like for you? Did you think about uh, things that you had written before, like different styles that you had tried or things that you just always loved as a kid and then how those all kind of fit together into your specific sound? Man, it's, that is an interesting thing in terms of how I got to finding my sound, so to speak. I... I think the same journey that that led me into writing is this simultaneous journey was happening also in the background with my sound. Um, so like maybe when you probably when you first met me, you probably didn't hear me talking with the accent that you're hearing me talk with now, which I was born and raised in Guyana. Um, and but when we moved to the States, all the kids picked on me. They're like, go back to Africa. Where are you from? You know? And so I'm like, oh, I'll be American tomorrow, honey. <laughs> and I came to school with my American accent the next day and never looked back. Um, really? So wow. as I began writing music, I started, I was like, well, let me take some voice lessons because, you know, I want to get my voice to a Celine Dion effect. <laughs> <laughs> still trying on that one <laughs> aren't we all <laughs> <laughs> but you know I wanted to uh make sure I was working in excellence and yes. getting my voice to that place um but my vocal teacher he was like you know I know you could sing but when when you're singing you sound great he was like but when we're doing these lessons it sounds like something jumped inside your throat <laughs> And so ironically, what was going on there was because I had been covering up my accent for so long, um, when I started uh, vocal training, um, my teacher started identifying those insecurities. Mm. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, I know why it sounds like something's in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just like confess, like, you know, I have a completely different talking accent that flows better when I sing. Um, but when I talk, I'm trying to cover it up. So when I'm doing the lessons, it, it was hindering my progress. And so that's in, in now me trying to heal from that and in, in just like, okay, now I just have to talk 
like I was created to talk. Your um, real I've, voice. Yeah, yeah, my real I voice. I love it, by the way. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. I, I love to hear you speak. And you're smiling as you speak, and it's just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I wish you were in sixth grade with me when I first came. I to know. I stage. wish I was, too. I want to tell every sixth grade girl, like, the things that people pick on you about, those are the things that make you special absolutely. and unique, and you need to hang on to that. Don't cover it up, you know? Yes, absolutely. So that's where I found my sound. It was really the Lord telling me, like, you have to be who I created you to be. Because when you try to be something else, it sounds like there's something in your throat. <laughs> because you're trying to have an American accent when it's not your yeah. first, you know, your, what you've learned, you know, what you've grown up speaking. And right. so it's like, wow, wow. And, right. um, and so that's something that you've kind of grown into, you know, making that choice, like an intentional choice of I'm going to use my real voice and I'm going to yeah. be who I am. Even though people used to pick on me in middle school, middle school's yeah. over. And yeah. We're not going back there. <laughs> yeah. And you, you kind of have to remind yourself of that every day. And like, for example, I was, uh, when I was recording uh, my song White Flag, um, my producer goes, we need something here, some kind of, uh, and he couldn't really explain what he wanted to say, but he, would, he was like, we need something here. And as he was saying that, I was like, I know just the thing. And there's a word that, me and my little brother we use to just joke around with each other and I just melodize that word and it's it's this Guyanese word you know and so I just melodized it and that work to be it's it's my voice but when you're listening to the song in the production it sounds like it's a plug-in but it's actually my vocal doing this oh, that's thing. Cool. It's, yeah. I'm just like, wow. So I need to focus on being me and using my voice and even bringing my culture into my music, you know? And so I, that, that authenticity is um, just really what God is constantly on me about. He was like, be authentically you. And as I, as I'm doing that, um, as, and what that means when I say as I'm doing that is basically as I'm letting go of a lot of the insecurities or um, just wrong ideas or, or things that I think I need to live up to. As I let go of those things, I, I am living a lot lighter. And I think that comes out in my music and in my sound. Yes, I love that you brought that up. And it is such it's like a burden being lifted when you're like, just it, it's more easy. It's like easy yeah. going uh, when you are just being your true self which is yeah. funny uh, you know that we have to work to get to that point but at the end like once you do kind of embrace your sound it's more like embracing your sound than finding it I think it's like yeah. oh it's out there somewhere no it's in you it's in you it's in you I love that so much um, and I think the people listening that are you know maybe songwriters who are trying to figure out their sound or their style it might be a mixture of styles and you can try different genres you can try um, you know doing covers of different songs and like figuring out how they do things. I think that research and that study is great, but at the end of the day, you're going to be the most fulfilled by just speaking your message and singing, you know, what's most true to you. And uh, it, it might be, you know, going back to your roots of what, where you started and mm -hmm. you're just going to keep growing and changing and that's okay too. It's okay to change Absolutely. genres because we are, you know, complicated people and we don't yes. have to stick to one thing forever. Yeah, absolutely. We grow, we grow and, and evolve. And, you know, sometimes what you enjoyed during your 20s is different than you enjoyed during your 30s and so on and so on. And so it's okay to change what you put out as you, you know, as you grow from within. So I love that so much. Well, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you um, about stage presence and like, is there mm -hmm. anything that you like, uh, you give yourself a pep talk or like you, how do you prepare when you're about to go on stage to present and like perform your songs uh, to be able to sing it authentically and to deliver that same emotion as the songwriter to the crowd and the audience that's listening? That's a good question. And I actually have to go back and answer a question that you asked me within the previous question. And I believe it was about uh, writing songs from the heart. And so I'm going to answer that first and Perfect. then bring out this answer because I think they both kind of coincide with one another. And so awesome. 
uh, writing songs from the heart for me, I believe you have to be honest, you know, and the chiefest person that you have to be honest with is yourself. Um, and as I shared before, like I was covering up my natural and true accent. And even in the songwriting process, sometimes you get a hook first. For me, typically what comes out first is the hook. The hook always comes first. And I love it because then I just That's sing awesome. it over and over. And I'm like, yes. oh, I like this song, you know? <laughs> um, and so you have to be honest with yourself um, first. And so, for example, my song Stranger, which was one of the um, first songs that I put out. Um, Stranger, for me, that was a song where I was in a place of hurt and rejection from someone that was as close to me as family, you know? And so I was processing that hurt. I was processing that rejection. And in, as a result of processing that hurt and rejection, here comes this song, Stranger, you know? Um, and the emotions that I was processing uh, with that song specifically, it helped me to it, I think, I think as, as I was writing that song, it helped me to process my own emotions. And then it, it also helped me in other situations with people to not reject people just off the bat, off of whatever I am processing in and of my own self, but to actually try to understand that person, where they're coming from, and maybe they're navigating some hurt themselves. So maybe that's why they are maybe treating me a certain way, right? So I'm, I'm this song, Stranger, I, it has these questions in it, essentially it says, do you know the story of the little girl? Do you know the story of like where she's from, you know? And then it says, she's ashamed of the things that she has to bear. She's ashamed of the scars that she has to wear. And then it flips, it goes, oh, I'm hurting. I'm ashamed.